All right, it's uh, five minutes past eight, so we will get going. There may be some other people uh, joining as we speak, but uh, thank you very much. A reminder just to uh, keep your uh, microphone on silent so we don't get any extra noise. Um, and uh, if you have a personal question, uh, you can address it to Sarah, who is our Sarah S, who's giving you a wave. Uh, she's our uh, leader's leader or our leader manager there. Um, and I'm really excited to welcome you all here on this call, all stuck in your self isolation uh, around the world. It certainly is a different world that we're living in now. And, uh, you know, I think we'll all look back and we'll all, it'll be one of those pivotal parts of our life where we will say, you know, where were you during the COVID crisis? Um, but it's a, a chance now for us to, uh, it's sort of like a kick in the bottom, so to speak, to get ourselves savvy with um, the internet and doing things online because we can't reach uh, people in the ordinary way. So we, we have to take our businesses online. So I know a few of you have said, you know, this uh, is an opportunity to, get yourself into gear and start to understand how you can do stuff online. So we've heard those requests in some of our leaders calls and I'm really pleased tonight to introduce two of the people who I believe are the best in their field, uh, but also a very uh, good friends of mine who will take us through tonight uh, using the platform that we're using at the moment, which is Zoom. And then over the next week, we're going to uh, look at other aspects of how, uh, what you need to know to be able to deliver classes online. So that includes things like just how to present in, in front of a camera, uh, how to use Facebook Live, how to advertise your events on Eventbrite, uh, whether you can charge or do things for free, everything like that. So. Uh, we'll talk about that more towards the end of the conference. But to introduce them, the first speaker tonight uh, will be Andrew Keating, who uh, has his hand up and saying hi. Hi, Andy. Andy is a sales coach. Thanks, Dinesh, for silencing it. Uh, Andy is a sales coach, and he specialises in, hel in helping people to uh, particularly take their businesses from a kind of one-to-one -one to a one to many. So this is really his bread and butter is uh, being able to take a, a small business and be able to uh, use social media, use tools like Zoom, prepare presentations to really start uh, putting your reach out to, to many people. And the thing I like about uh, Andy is he is very strong on trying to do things in an ethical manner, so ethical sales. There's plenty of salespeople who promise the world and have all these fancy trickery, hokey pokery stuff. But the good thing about Andy's advice is it's very down to earth, it's very ethical, which is what I like. Um, and what happens is it creates long lasting relationships so that the people who um, are with you, you know, recognize you as an ethical person and want to stay with you. The second person I want to introduce is Mana, who's, who's been, uh, who is actually helping us host the meeting today as well. Mana is a um, master coach and also uh, will be taking the second part of the presentation. And uh, she's very good with technology. She'll be showing us how to create the account. But Mana is also a, a coach. Uh, she's also my yoga teacher on the retreats that we do, if you come on retreat with me. Uh, so you'll love that. And I think the one thing that uh, I'll have to say about Mana, which you would uh, know straight away if you met her one-on-one, -on -one, is when you're in her presence, you instantly form a bond of friendship and you feel like she's your family straight away. So uh, she has this great ability to just connect with people and that helps her in her coaching, that if you've got a block, something or other is holding you back, whether it's on a physical, emotional, or even an esoterical level from being the best that you want to be. Uh, Mana has this ability to almost have ESP into your mind and see what's holding you back. So they are uh, two great people. I'm so pleased to uh, let, let you guys uh, get to know them. 
Um, and before I hand over the other person that I'd like to introduce is, of course, Sarah, who many of you know. She's our leader manager. So if you have any questions, um, send them to Sarah, and we'll be asking you, by the way, at the end to uh, submit your proposed dates for uh, online classes to Sarah, and we will help you advertise and help you get them on a calendar as well. So without further ado, uh, thank you very much. I'm so excited to see you all here, and I'd like to hand over to Andrew Keating to kick us off. Thank you, Andrew. Hey, how are you guys? Are you well, now, one thing I will say, thank you, a show of thumbs, something like that would be good if you, can, if you can see me. Fantastic. So first thing I would just like to say, now, actually, can I just ask, can somebody just make me a co-host on there, please? That would be really good, I am. Right. Um, okay, so one thing I would just like to say, first of all, because there's so many people on here, we can obviously get you all to speak, so it's good that you're all on mute. But if you do agree with anything that we say, or it's something that resonates with you, or I ask a question that you agree with in, a, in an affirmation, if you, can just have a, if you can just put your hand up like that, that would be fantastic. So if I say today um, something like, uh, who here owns a mobile phone? Yeah, you can all show of hands, that would be really good. For those people that obviously are on the, just on the phone, you can't do that. And, but uh, for if, if you can for me, please, just so I know that you're all still there, still listening, that would be amazing. So the reason why we're doing this today is because the world has changed. The world has changed in the last week, two weeks. And it's the businesses that pivot quickly that will not only survive, but will thrive. And what we realize is that there's going to be some of you here today that are all over your technology and can do all this, and it's fantastic. And there might be elements that you can do everything today, but later on down in this series, there'll be something you can still learn from. Now, we have currently 30 participants in here today. That means that there's going to be 30 different training sessions that's happening. There's the one I'm giving, and there's the one that you're receiving. And you're all gonna receive it in your own way and take the things hopefully from you that's gonna that's going benefit you the most. So even if for some of this, it seems like, oh, that's really basic stuff, we are gonna be moving along. And, and it's about being actionable. So what we do today, you're gonna to be really actionable. You're gonna take action after this, after this call and put things into place for our next call, which is uh, the 30th on Monday. So what I'd like to do, a bit of housekeeping, even though it's uh, over Zoom, a bit of housekeeping. There's some things that you're going to see or might hear. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm here in my house in isolation as well, and I've got my children in the other room, which I'm really hoping are gonna stay quiet and, and uh, not make a noise. I've got the dog here by, by my feet. So there might be some noise that you hear. There might be some things that go wrong. There's also other things that can go wrong. It, we could suddenly lose connection. The battery could die, hopefully, or something happened with the computer. Now, hopefully, they're not going to happen. But these are the things that might happen when you're running your event online as well. So it's, it's about signposting to you what the things that can go wrong, first of all. And also, I have a light in front of me. It's called a, a, a ring light, just to, just to give a better view of me so sometimes when I put my glasses up you see you can see the ring in the in the thing of the glasses so I'll try not to do that but if that's if that happens and I do apologize so the first thing I'm just going to do is share my screen um, and I'll just get the all right so those of you who can see the screen can you actually see my screen there can you just give me a show of hands yes you can actually see that that's fantastic so like i said this is about transitioning your business online oh i'm sorry just step back can everybody hear me okay yes okay brilliant so this is about transitioning your business online but before we do that i actually want to i actually want you to do something for me i understand there's people on here from all around uh, the world or mainly the uk and, and australia if you can in the chat box i'd like you to Go into the chat box and type uh, where you come from, so the place you come from and the country. If you could do that, that would be 
amazing. There you go, Essex. What can I see there? Essex, India, Hastings, Devon. Well, some of you may have uh, spotted that although I'm, I'm living in Australia, I'm actually from God's own country, which is Yorkshire. Adelaide. Beautiful, Devon. So I've been living in Australia for roughly around seven years now. I think still people uh, in the, in the, over here would call me a pom. I think if I go back to the UK now, they, uh, they call me an Aussie. So I think the, the correct term should be posy. Is that right? So I don't know, but we'll see about that. Uh, okay, so that's fantastic. So you've all learned how to use the chat room. Well done. But I'm glad you're all here. I'm glad you're all taking the time and I'm glad you're all, you know, not just sitting back and waiting for things to happen. This is your chance to move your business and pivot to do something that potentially you're not comfortable with and potentially you've not done before. So while we do this, I want you to think about your business all the time as we're walking through this. And so I'll, I'll think about how you're going to move that from where you are to where you want it to be. Was it Albert Einstein says that the, um, the definition of insanity is doing uh, the same thing and expecting different results. So that may have worked in the past, but like I said, the, the world has suddenly changed. We've now got to pivot a sharp left or right turn to try and create something. And like I said before, those that create something now are going to be the ones who thrive and survive as we move out of this. All right. So we, we got told a little bit about... about uh, me, you've already, you've already heard a lot about me, but my name is Andrew Keating. And I, like I say, I help small business and coaches move from one to one to one to many. So we help scale their business. Again, from, so it helps stop burnout for coaches. It helps stop burnout for self-care uh, uh, people who are, who are really givers, but end up giving so much that they end up burning out themselves. So, so I help them transition their business and grow their footprint online and the next person that now you might just want to make yourself unmuted there Mana, because i'm just going to if we just go down to Mana here Mana, do you want to just say a little bit about what you do oh, hi hi andy so hi everyone i'm Mana abraham i'm a business coach and i'm very passionate about mindfulness and also money because these both should go hand in hand and both are energies and that's the most powerful gift we all have and you all have as meditation leaders. So what I do is I help businesses providing them virtual team of experts, whether it is IT, whether it is accounting or taxation or giving you mindset strategies. So I help you to accelerate by providing the team of experts. That's about Thank me. Thank you, Manet. Thank you very much. And she's brilliant as well, by the way. So uh, I can vouch for that. <laughs> All right, so you'll see the next slide here is why are we here? And like I say, we're all here for different reasons and I've just put one of these that potentially may apply to you. So you may want to support your community. So with everything that's gone on in the last couple of weeks and people are self-isolating, I don't think it's more important and your role is not as, not, so your role is more important now than it has ever been. The keeping people grounded helping them find the peace in the panic is really important you might want to add value to your group so what do i mean by that so although you will when this when this uh, when we're over this and you start to you know we all start to emerge again you know you may be doing your face-to-face -face classes as well but you may want to add an element to your members of where they can potentially have an added of online as well as the face-to-face. -face. So it's just an added value for them. You might want to grow your reach. You might have got to the position where you say, okay, this is the time. I can't go anywhere. So I'm not just going to sit there and watch Netflix. I'm actually going to do something and I'm going to move my business. And now it's time to make sure that when we come out of this, we can grow. 
So you might want to grow your reach. And again, once you start going into the online platform, and, and, and the great thing about with the skillful mind is that once, that once you start to grow your platform, they will help with that. And you can get people coming on to your online workshops from all over the world. And that's the same at the bottom one, really. You really want to just scale your business. So it's about, okay, saying, okay, I, I don't know, I don't no longer want to just be me. I want to work, don't, not just work in the business, I want to work on the business. So often we get carried away with really working in the business and it's really hard to uh, do anything else. And you really, you know, you get so caught up with doing accounts and you, say, you get so caught up with doing all the things to run a business, all the social media side, that actually the thing that you love, which is teaching, or the thing that you love, which is coaching, you, spend, you, te you tend to spend less time doing that because of all the other things that's taking your time. And that's one of the things that we find when I, when I run my course of the business in the box, which is what happens from the business in the box is people spend so much time, like I said, doing everything else. And they're not an expert. I'm not an expert in accounting, but guess what? I know that people that are, I know for, for me, I can get somebody like Mana to help me with my accounting. So I can get experts on board to really help me grow. So what I'd like you to do is, again, in the chat box, if you can, please, I'd like you to say, okay, which one of them, and it might be more than one, but you can go one, two, three, or four, which one is more like you, or what do you resonate with in, in one of them four? So just tap that in the chat box, that would be awesome. Mm. fantastic so a lot of ones coming that's great and far yeah absolutely it's about you know you're in the right space now to grow your business and scale it fantastic but what, what's really what's really pleasing there as well is there's a lot of people that just want to provide help to people in this situation and what's really important is the longer that you're not in contact with your, your members of your uh, meditation group is the colder people get. And when I, when I put sales strategies in place for businesses, it's the contact that's really important. People don't care what you say, they care that you've contacted them or they can at least see you. And if in six months time when we all emerge, the first time that they see that you contact them, you, you've lost that you've lost that momentum. So this is a great way to maintain the contact with them along the way. Some of you may be really good at that already, but this is a really good way to help maintain that. All right, we'll move on. So what are some of the challenges that you face? What are some of the challenges for you about doing a, a business online? Again, I'll, I'll see that hit A, it says, I don't know where to start. B says, I'm not tech savvy. C, I'm not comfortable speaking in public. D, I don't like speaking on camera. And E, I don't even like having my picture taken. Now, again, there may be more than one of them, but I'd like you to just put in the chat box again, which one is, uh, which are the challenges that you have? And believe, and believe it or not, I just want to say this, uh, you know, I'm actually an introvert. Somebody pointed out to me recently, but I'm actually an introvert. So for me to do this, text, text something. Uh, and I do a speaking, a speaking in front of crowds and, and gatherings now, but it can be learned. So let's have a look at what we have. <laughs> a, B and D, B and E. One mostly and a bit of two. Great. All right, so I'll please put something in there because this is about you being accountable as well of what you're doing. This is saying, I've got this issue or this is, this is my challenge. If at the end of this series you feel that you've got over not being tech savvy, then it's been a win, right? Yes? Fabulous. Okay. So going back to today, 
the outcome of today by the end of this training session is that you'll be able to efficiently efficiently set up a zoom account to schedule meditation meetings and to send out class invitations by email or by uh by other means so if you can achieve all them things by the end of this session then that's going to be a big win right and that will set us up for the next session all right i just want to show you this slide next so this is, uh, this is a CrossFit gym that, that, that uh, I went to just until recently, of course. And when all this came about, when all this happened, there will have been some gyms that will have sat back and, th and thought to themselves, okay, well, what do we do? I'll see what the government's doing. I've just got to shut my doors. Or there's going to be somebody like Winston who owns uh, this gym. And what, what he did was, Straight away, he created two, two or three courses online, and he's now doing live, the live training uh, sessions over Zoom. So you can see in that picture there, there's people warming up and stretching, but that's what they're doing. So everybody is doing the same session, but doing it via Zoom. And the great thing is, you still get to keep that community going. So really important, and that's some of the reasons why. So that's somebody who's taken the bull by the horns and says, I can wait for something to happen or I can make it happen. And that's a decision that you're all faced with today. And the fact that you're, very, you're on this call, I would quite happily say that you've taken the decision to not wait to actually make something happen. All right, so are you ready? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hand over to Mana, and Mana's gonna go through a live um, session of how you can actually move this online or oh, sorry how can you set up your own zoom uh, account if you haven't got one of these already this is this is a really powerful tool is zoom and, and Mana is is an expert and she's going to talk you through this next stage of this training so I'll shut up for a while and I'll let Mana speak Mana are you there yeah thanks Andy all right I'll stop my share. Okay. Hi everyone. Again, I think we all are givers and we all are introverts. And I think we also know how to be extroverts when required. And I think, and I'm also very passionate about women. And also at the same time, I also coach men. And I think it's so important that we give, but it's also so important we take care of ourselves because if we don't fill our tanks first, we can't drive to help someone. So, and I think that's what we all are here for. So self-care is important. And also it's just not about giving because for us to sustain, we have to take it, scale it up. And just to give you a glimpse of what Zoom can do for you is pretty much what you're seeing right in front of you. You've got 31 people from four different countries and you're sitting in your living room, wherever you are, and you're reaching the world. So this is your platform and this is your future. And that's, this is what you can do. And you can scale up just not to your communities and to your nearby suburbs, even to the world at large. So there's a huge scope and you can reach out to the world just sitting in your living room using the Zoom platform. I'll quickly share my screen. It's a very simple process as to how we go with the uh, Zoom. Okay, can you see my screen? All right, so Zoom is an amazing platform and everybody is on board. You have various options where how you can conduct your classes online and Zoom we found to be very helpful. We also work on Hangouts and Team Views, but Zoom is really good and it has got a good capacity to take up to more than 10,000 participants if you're scaling up. And you have these three basic plans, four basic plans in Zoom, which is a free version over here, as you can see. And there's also a pro version. And then for our scale of uh, businesses, I really strongly recommend that we do a pro instead of a basic free one. The reason, if you look at the free version, it hosts up to 100 participants, yes, but it limits you to only 40 minutes group meetings. While if you go on to the pro, which would cost you about $21 Australian, probably that would be 10 to 11 pounds, which will allow you to do about 100 participants, but it will give you a bandwidth of 24 hours that you can run your classes. 
So what do you, what does it mean for you? So if you run a retreat, a meditation class for two hours, pro is your best option. And if you plan to run a retreat, even for half a day or a day online or in different sessions, pro is the best option for you to go forward. And there are various benefits that you get through pro. So what I would do is, so you can choose between those two because I would really not recommend business or enterprises because that's for small and medium businesses and also on the expensive side. So I'll quickly also what I do is I'll show you how to set up a basic Zoom account. Sorry, I'm just screaming now. I'm signing out of my accounts because like if I can open a basic one, then it will again direct me to my account. Okay, so that's your Zoom. So you log into zoom.us and then you can go into stuff. It's free. Click on that. So you can use your work email address. Can you all see me? Is it, am I audible? Okay. So sign up free. So you can use your email address, which you use for your normal correspondence. And that's the one that you will be using even for all your future meetings. You can also sign in with your Facebook account and with your Google account. So here I'm just creating a normal email address over here, which I got a couple of accounts. So I would go with the uh, Is another one. So it will send me an email. Sorry, it's just taking time to get an email. All right, so it's taking time, but I can still show you how, when, when you receive an email from them and how you can activate it. Just, just one, one, writing, writing more email. Email. Uh, one thing you'll notice that with a pro account, you can add multiple users. And although only one user can use the pro account at one time you can swap between users so say for example mana and i uh open up a pro account under skillful mind if she runs a meditation class in the morning she can use her pro account in the morning and then we can swap it over to me in the afternoon and i can use it in the afternoon so uh, if you use it in conjunction with another person uh then you know you can split the cost of the zoom pro account if you wanted to go down that route and in fact you could even do three or four people yeah that's right yeah so what i'm doing is i'm still taking time to get that email so i already have one account here which i just activated this morning you'll receive an email like this saying please activate your zoom account and when you click here you we can can't see the email we can't see the email on your screen Sorry, so what screen? Sorry. We can just see the um, Zoom the browser screen. Okay, you can see welcome to Zoom? Yep, yep. Okay, so you go next. Okay, so when we activated that email, it gives you the screenshot and you can invite your colleagues if you want to, but for these purposes, we are skipping this step. And then you can, so that's all it is. So when you're creating a new account, all you have to do is use your email, which, what you normally use for your correspondence. You receive an email, you activate it, that's it. And once you do that, then you enter a screen like this and you can use what you have created just now. So I'm still going ahead with my account and password to show further, but that's where you pretty much, these are the basic steps. And I sign in. So you use your email ID and password which you just created. You sign into your account. 
And once you get into your screen, so you start with setting up your profile. Are you with me? Can you see me? Can you see my screen, everyone? Yep. Yep, all right. So you get into your profile screen. It's pretty easy. And you can change your, so here if you look at it, you can get your picture up there or you can get your business logo. And I got my first name and last name. You can edit it. You can edit and you can add your phone numbers if people want to access your details. Pretty much all your meetings you can run using this, this generates a meeting ID for you. So that's the link you would be using for all your sessions in the future. And I said that email is so important because that's the email for your correspondence for all your future workshops. So it's, we ensure that that's, the, that's your correspondence email and not a banking email or not a payments email. So here I'm a licensed user. So that gives me much more, uh, what do you say, controls than a basic user. And as just Peter was referring to, you can have three roles in your pro account. So, and I'm on a licensed role. So that means it allows you to run your sessions for more than 40 minutes and up to 24 hours. And you can have up to 100 participants. You can choose your language. You can edit, choose your language if you're in any other non-English speaking country. Then date and time I've chosen because I live in Adelaide. I've given my time GMT plus 10.30. You can choose your time here by clicking on edit. Date format, which is your preference again, that seemed to be a US format, MMDD, but you, UK and Australia, we use DDMM. And that's my alternate contacts. So the beauty about using Zoom as your platform is it allows you to integrate your calendar and contacts from your, from your account, from your email account. So you can allow Zoom to integrate into your calendar. So the moment you set up any meetings in future, these meetings can get directly added into your calendar. So you, you can easily keep control. And also allow Zoom, it will allow you to sync contacts. And why that is important is because we have been working on so far on a face-to-face -face interaction. So probably you didn't have email IDs, probably you only were contacting through Facebook or Messenger. But having email IDs will help you because you can create a contact list and it's easy for you to communicate and share your messages to people. And that's it, that's all you, it's so easy to set up your profile over here. And then once we go into that, once you finish your profile, get your picture in, the next thing that you have to really know through this process is about how to set up your meetings. So can you see my meeting screen? Good, okay. So you have schedule a meeting, join a meeting and host a meeting. So schedule a meeting is where when you're setting a meeting into the future and the other one is saying join a meeting, which is if you're not scheduling a meeting and you just want to catch up with someone via Zoom, what you can do is you can click join a meeting, send them an invite and you can immediately connect with them. And host a meeting is what I'm doing right now where I schedule and we are hosting the meeting for you today. So we'll quickly go and run through the steps of how do you schedule your meeting. So um, Lana, just quickly, uh, people may have been watching on the chat line. and there's a, a few questions. Bronwyn asks, can we run several meeting sessions in Zoom? Well, as long as they're one after another, yes, but you can't run them parallel. Uh, Fiona asked uh, about whether you have a different email sign-in for this. I think that uh, I, trend, I tend to use my general one because I figure if people want to connect with me and they're finding me on Zoom, then they can email me. Perhaps they've seen me on Zoom and they need to get my email address. It's my standard one. However, Helen just wrote that Zoom are currently under fire for sharing people's data. So maybe don't use your email. I've never heard of that, but that's just a note from Helen. So Sorry, what was Helen's query, Pete? She said that uh, she's heard that Zoom are under fire for sharing other people's emails. I don't know whether that means they've been hacked or something, but um, uh, I've, I've not heard of them sharing yeah. emails. But I mean, from my point of view, my email is shared to, I want it to be shared by thousands of people anyway, because I want people uh, writing to me. So that's not, a, not an issue for me, yeah. uh, unless it is, unless of course it, we get spam. But yeah, I think the challenge, sorry, go ahead, Pete. 
Yeah, no, that's it. Okay. Yeah, so I think the challenge is about whether you're using your, your personal email account for business as well, but the moment you're stepping into transitioning your business online, it's very important that you keep your private and business email separate. So if you, if you want to, and if you like, you can create your own separate business email account and still have calendars. And you can use that for correspondence because at the end of the day, whether someone are explicit about explaining they're using our data or they're not, we are always online. We are in the cloud. So everybody have our email IDs in one form or the other. So you can keep your personal and business data separate by having two separate email IDs and use your business email to log into your Zoom and you can use that for all your future purposes. Are you with me? Okay. So now let's see, so how do you schedule a new meeting? So all these meetings go into schedule a new meeting. So you give your topic. So let's say our third catch up is going to be about uh, how to say, I'm just giving a name there, how to, that's your topic. Your description is optional. And you can even you can create templates, which we will do it in the next version. And also I, I heard someone asking, can we run parallel meetings? Yes, in the Zoom, in the advanced options, provided you're on a pro offer, you have Zoom rooms. So what you can do is you can actually create multiple rooms, which will run multiple meetings parallelly. You can do that, which is an advanced feature and we can run it through if it is requested. If you think that's relevant for you, we can run it in the next session, how to set up Zoom rooms, and how you can have multiple one-on-one -on -one meetings. You can do that. A lot of features on Zoom, you can do that. And yes, you can also set recurring meetings. I'll show you how we can do that. So use a template and say, when we are doing it, we are doing, the next one is already, I already set up the Monday meeting. So I'm now setting up the Wednesday meeting where we talk about how to go online with FB and YouTube. So I'm saying on 8 p.m. So, oops, that's for one hour because you're on a pro, so it allows you for one hour. But then if you're only running, if you're not on pro and only on basic, it only allows you for 40 minutes, not more than that. And someone asked me whether they can conduct multiple meetings. Yes, you can. So the beauty of the Zoom is with any other calendar, you have the same feature, which is you set up and then you can, con set recurring meetings. So you pretty much can decide every Saturday between 10 and 12, I'm doing this meditation class online. So you can set up recurring, you can set up say every week, you can set it up, repeat every week, and you can set your day, you can set your time. So you can conduct recurring meetings, which is week one. So you only have to create once and then you can keep it recurring and give those dates to Sarah when at the end, which Andrew will take you through. Registration, we are not ticking this box as required because this is meditation online class and everybody is open for many. So we are not really looking at registrations at this stage, but if you want to and put that protocol in place, you can keep that. Meeting ID, you have these two options, which is your personal meeting ID and generate automatically. So, but just to ensure that people can identify these are different meetings, it will help if you can leave it at generate automatically. That means it creates ID every time you run a new meeting. We are not really focusing on required meeting password, but in normally in formal settings or in corporate meetings, we do say require meeting password, but that's up to you. And video host participant, if it is a very business workshop, we don't really promote having a video of the participants, we just chat, but this is all about meditation, seeing each other, community, so set your video on and participants on. So you can see just like what we did this to, uh, at the start of this workshop. Keep your audio both and meeting options. You can have enable join before host or enable waiting room. So what we did today is enable waiting room. So where you actually waited for someone to allow you in. So you can choose either enable waiting room or enable join before first. But it would be ideal if you can enable waiting room and there's someone, like say, when you came in, we admitted you, that's much better than you just being there and the host coming in. That kind of tells people that you are the one who's leading the session tonight. 
And if you have multiple users, you can use uh, add alternative first, otherwise you can just set it. And now you are thinking, oops, I did a mistake. It should have been a different date or the timing is wrong. Easy. All you do, again, go click on edit this meeting and you can make the changes. So it's easy. You can also delete the meeting if you don't want this and you want to set up a new meeting. And the beauty about this is you can also set this up as your templates. So once you created it, you save it. So once you save your meeting, this is how your screen looks like. And what happens is you can add this meeting to your calendar. So I'm adding it to my Google Calendar, for example, because I use multiple accounts. So here I'm adding it to Google Calendar. And it asks you to choose an account. I think Helen was asking about personal and business. And Helen, I'm with you in this. I'm using my personal account because I use that for all my business and personal purposes and my personal account is totally different. So I'm happy to use this, but if you're not, you can set aside a separate account and integrate that. So and here someone is talking about policies. So you're using your iPhone. Google has all your contacts and phone now. I trust this service, so I'm allowing it. That's it. So it's added onto my calendar, save, and it's in there. Good. So now, so what we did now, we scheduled a meeting, we added a calendar, and now what do we do? How do you invite your attendees? So here you can see invite attendees and it says join URL and that's the link. So but when we, I hope you remember we create generate meeting ID automatically. So it created the separate meeting ID out there. So what you can do is you can use this URL to contact your participants. So what you can do is choose two options. Either you can copy this straight away from here and send it to your friends and paste it to Facebook group and then you can say this is a session and join using this URL. You can do that or you can copy the invitation. Can you see my screen everyone? Okay. Copy the invitation. So this is your invitation. It's simple, straightforward. Copy meeting invitation, so it copies. And then here I'm doing it using my email ID. Just copy and you can send it to your email, to your clients or to your participants. So here I'm just using my personal ID to send it out there. Which but then, sorry, what is that? We can't see your email, but I'm assuming you're cutting and pasting into just a normal email. Yeah, that's right. So, can you all see me? Can you see my copy meeting invitation? So that's it. So what I'm doing is I'm just copying this invita meeting invitation and you can copy it onto your Facebook or into your WhatsApp messages or Skype messages. You don't even have to copy the whole meeting. If you don't want to, you can just use this URL. Can you see the URL which I'm highlighting at this stage? Yeah, that's it. So you copy paste that URL and send it out to you participants i think one of the key challenges that you all will face is not having an email id because probably you all would have been contacting through social media so you can even post it on your social media all right so that's it and then you go into your screen so your meeting is all so and someone is asking can we schedule multiple meetings yes you can if you look at our meetings here you can see all of them scheduled over here. Can you all see me? Yeah. All right. And then you can also set up recurring me here. The list of my webinar, which I run every week, which is the listening post. I schedule it as recurring webinar 
every Friday that happens. So I only had to do once. It generates the meeting ID and then people know. And you can, so that means you can multi schedule multiple meetings at the same time. All right. So how did you go so far? Are you all okay? Um, one comment I would say, you meeting IDs for all different uh, yeah. meetings, which in one way it's good because it's, um, you, you can't cross-reference. But I guess my preference is actually to use my meeting ID, the same one every time. That way there's no confusion. So, um, yeah, so that way if someone's got an old email and then they click that same link that they used three meetings ago, but if they did it at the right time, they'll still get into the same meeting. So I personally try to use my personal email ID every single time so that there's consistency. Sure, yeah. So that's another way to look at it as well because I set up so many meetings and my meetings happen in a day. Like say, day before yesterday, my meeting started like morning about 9.30 and I only got up from this desk about 11 o'clock. So I had so many meetings with so many people. And then again, the same thing day before, same thing yesterday, same thing today. So it helps me to see that I'm not in the same meeting because my day is full. But that's another option again. When you're setting up your meeting, you can actually generate automatic or use your personal meeting id that's personal preferences again all right so are you okay so far and i think this is already an overload and the best thing that you can do at this stage is to take the information away and try it set up your meetings set up recurring meetings and see what challenges you have and come back to us all right so with this Thank you, everyone, and over to Andrew. Okay, can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. All right, fantastic. So that was a really good run through just the basics of setting up a Zoom meeting and setting up your account. Again, I know that some of you may already have an account and to some of you, this may be slightly, um, you, might, you might already know this stuff, but to, to, we're all on the same track and we're all going to the same pace. So like I said before, there'll be something in some of the other sessions that hopefully will be, will be um, good for you. And they may answer that they're not very tech savvy, that this is absolutely brand new information and hopefully you've learned something from that. So I think just quickly, uh, just to reiterate, what well, can you all see my screen by the way? Yes, yes, fantastic. Okay, so remember, you've got to decide which one you want. You can share accounts, as uh, Peter rightly says. I truly believe that the pro account is worth every single penny. Not just for the extra time that you get on there, because like I said, you can run a 24-hour meeting if you want. But the fact that you can record the meetings and you can download that recording, and why would you want to do that is, Eventually, if you've got a whole library of meetings, you can then put it on an online platform and have a whole catalog of things that people can access in a membership site somewhere. So I think it's a really powerful thing to do. And for the sake of $21 or maybe 10, 11 pounds, I think it's, I think it's worth its weight in gold. And like Peter Wright says, you can share one with somebody within the group if you, if you have a relationship, I'm sure um, you can do that. Uh, so that's that's what my suggestion would be. So then you just sign up, and again, I, I always go in with mine. I just sign up with Google, so just sign up with Google, and that takes me straight in there. Sends you an email, email comes like that. So you just got to activate your account. It will bring up this screen here. <clears throat> Excuse me, it will bring up this screen here to put your, put your details in, and that will transfer some of that information into uh, when, when you get your profile, your personal profile there. Then schedule your meeting, decide what you're going to have. I, I think as Mana sort of mentioned, but I think it's worth pointing out again, when somebody comes to one of your face-to-face -face meditation classes, I'm sure before the class starts, everybody has a bit of a chat, everybody downloads the day or downloads the week before they get into the class. 
So potentially, I think having a waiting room where people can actually access into and have that chat before you then start the uh, come on as the host, I think it is actually a really good way to keep your community together. So have a think about whether you have the meeting room uh, enabled or not. But these are some things that you can have a play with. Again, then we uh, attach it to the calendar, confirm the choices. And then that will bring you up to the screen like this, which will be what you're doing. Then you can obviously copy this here. Oh, I don't have one twice. Paste it in. And guess what? You have a meeting schedule set up. And then when you do come into it, you just open it and it will just launch that for you. So that's, a, that's the, really the uh, I wanted to talk about today. So hopefully by, by this time, you can now go and create your own Zoom account. You can set up your profile effectively and you can set your meetings. Now, as I said before, this is about taking action. We're not sitting and watching Netflix, we're taking action on what we're doing. So when you finish this session, go and create your own account before, and this has to be done before the next session. So go create your own Zoom Pro account or basic account. Set up your profile, set up meetings for at least one month. Be good to get six months in there, but set up for one month. That'll get you used to doing it because you've done it multiple times. And then second, we want you to send the dates to Sarah so she can up onto the joint calendar for Skillful Mile. And who knows, you may have people all over the world joining your, uh, joining your meditation classes. So, the next call is on the 30th of March, Adelaide time, 8 p.m. The uh, clocks go forward this weekend, so uh, it will be slightly later at a.m. for you, I believe. Please check that. Um, I'll stop sharing screen now. So, uh, and that really is. What, what, we've, what we've been doing today. Hopefully you've taken something from that. And it's about now taking action, making something happen. Then when we get to the next stage, which we will be creating an event, right? And, and Facebook and that. And then we'll move on to how to present, how to set up your own, uh, how to run a workshop um, from, from Zoom as well. So um, Peter, do you want to say a word in finishing? Or Just happy to. Uh, just to let you know that, you know, as Andy says, go ahead, dive in, set up your Zoom account, go ahead and just pluck some dates out of the air. I know some of you, some of you are diving in the deep end, but there's nothing like that to learn how to swim. Just um, uh, select a date and then send it through to Sarah. We're going to put it on a joint calendar and then we'll get your participants to go to that calendar and they may join your class, but they also might join other leaders' classes. And I'm hoping that cross-pollination will enable all of us to have bigger classes. So you might schedule a class and, you know, get some participants out of Sarah's class or Jules's class or someone else's class as well. And, and hopefully that'll help us all get, you know, seven or eight people in a class. We haven't talked about payment options at the moment. We are going to talk about that at a later date. Some of you may want to do this for free at this stage. Some of you may want to uh, do it for payment. We were not going to talk about that in this uh, point. Uh, there's yeah. been lots of questions um, and we'll continue to answer your questions. Um, I think, sorry, Pete, I think I'm pitching in. So I think it's very important at this stage is that you all create your Zoom account and schedule your meetings, send it out to Sarah. And I think Jules is asking about the payment options. Yes, uh, that's, that's something we can see. That's, that's all going to be in your next session on Monday, where how to set up your event on Eventbrite and how you offer your payment plans. So what you can do in the next session, it's very important that you create your Zoom accounts, set up your recurring meetings, and come back with an image for your class, a write-up for your class, and the date, one, at least one date for your class to start with. And we can take 
one of your events and we can create an event on Eventbrite and we can show you how you go with the payment plan, payment links in Eventbrite. And you can push that Eventbrite event into your Facebook. You can import it. So pretty much Eventbrite and Facebook can work hand in hand. So the key thing is, and, and that's the reason why Peter was insisting that we have these sessions in two days time. So idea is to get you go online. So create your account, schedule the dates, text it to Sarah so that it's on Skillful Minds calendar. Come back on Monday, as Andrew has mentioned. That's where we'll show you. We do the event and we push it into your Facebook and you're ready to go. That's it for me. And for those who have finished their assessment, get going. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and this is your future. This is Zoom. You're meeting people, 40 people worldwide, and one hour we were chatting and we are speaking to each other. This is the future. So this is seamless. So you can do it. Um, I think we'll wrap up there, but we might just stay online. There's quite a few questions coming through. We will try to answer your questions. Yeah. Um, and feel free to write to us, email uh, to Sarah, myself, Manor, Andy. Um, and then, yeah, we'll follow up. This will be a, a recording will be in the resources vault and possibly on the Facebook Live group. Uh, so if you miss the, the Monday ones, I will record that, etc. So we will get you up and running as quickly as we can. Has that been useful yeah. for everybody? Yes? Fantastic. Pretty Monday. Namaste. Thank you very much. You very uh, I'm going to log off now. But if you've got any questions, uh, we'll be on. Mana will be on for another five minutes. Thank also. you. Thanks. See ya. See ya. Bye. So anybody has any questions? And if I if I, if if I couldn't address all of them, I'll ensure that I inform Sarah, and Sarah has, can come back to you with more information on those details. I did respond to most of them. Kate. You're asking something? Yeah, if um, I've had my Zoom account for a little while and have it under a different email to what I want to have it under now, would mm -hmm. I need to create, pay for another pro membership or can I just go in there and change the email? You can just go in and change your email. Perfect, thank you. Any more questions, anyone? Can you unmute? Hi, um, I'm Joanna, <laughs> how are you? Uh, my question is in regards to registrations before when you're going through the list um, in Zoom. Um, obviously, if you're going through Eventbrite, you could capture people's emails at that point, but what would be the reason you wouldn't do that registrations um, in Zoom? All right. So because now we are running through a process where as, as, as the businesses we are, if we are just posting it on your Facebook group, you're confining yourself to just your group and in your community. But the moment you put it on Eventbrite, you're opening up to the world. So, the mo mm -hmm. and so this entire process of the four sessions are built in such a way that you create your Zoom accounts, schedule your meetings, push them onto Eventbrite, push them onto Facebook. But if you're not using an Eventbrite, yes, you can go into registration required. So you will be notified when someone is saying yes or no. Mm -hmm. And also you can create a poll when you're sending out emails and even in your Facebook group, who is attending, who is not attending. There are various options. So we will see that in the next session. So even if you don't, so yes, mm -hmm. you can go and tick the registration required. But if you don't, you can still go into your Facebook group and create interested going. You can see them there and who's confirming it for you. Right, right. Thank you very much. You can do. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone, any more questions? Um, yeah, I will. So the stuff like text stuff, like, so see how my screen's like going all yellow? <laughs> but if I move or whatever it goes, I don't know. Anyway. It's changed. That's yeah, that's our third session. Andrew is covering on as to how to run your meeting. So today, oh, okay. we're scheduling a meeting and going yep. ahead to get the calendars organized. The cool. second so, is about we run Eventbrite Facebook. And yep. the third session, which we are running the next Wednesday, is about how to run your meeting, what sort of audio equipment you need, 
what's the, like how what are the presentation basics and how you can avoid that if that's that's on wednesday which is okay first of April. yeah good excellent thank you no any more questions hi yeah hi, um, hello hi and sorry i think this one um this is one helen asked and i think this is one actually probably for sarah just asking um and i was wondering about this too as well with these sessions um some of us also have our own um meditations as well as peter's um so is it okay if we're using our own meditations as well or yes we as long as as long as you're skillful mind leader you yes it is all about ensuring that you thrive in your business and that's what yeah. it like is all about so you have to excel in your business that's the whole point so yes and and i will leave it to again Yes, this is my understanding, knowing Peter and his vision and how he wants to help his meditation leaders. But if there's any difference, Sarah, I would ask you to just have a word with Peter as well if he thinks, yeah. But I, would, I doubt it. It's all yeah. about you thriving in your business and that's why he has taken pains to organize this for you to thrive. So yeah, so it should be. Thank up. you, man. Yeah. Any more questions? We're all good. All right then. So have a good weekend, everyone, and enjoy. Set it up. Send your details to Sarah. And thank you, Sarah, so much for being there today for every one of us. And thank you, Andy. And see you on Monday for one now. Thank you, Mana. Thank you. See you Monday. Bye. -bye. Have a great day. We'll see you on Monday.